I want some of your power. And he wanted to make a deal with you, right? What would you ask for in, like, in exchange? So if I was a magical girl. Like, 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 you know how some beings are like, can you submit your offspring or like give me x amount of souls by the end of the month you know or whatever what would you what would you ask for cats 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 michael i would ask for a better gaming pc that's fair that's fair i would ask for nuggies an infinite supply of nuggies no one's anyways welcome to the traveler's (laughs) tips and tales i'm jake i'm mike i'm ben I'm and Dale. Joining with us today is Dale. Hello, Dale. <laughs> Hello, Jacob. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, Jacob. You kind of turned that around like to the reverse of what I was expecting. I thought you were gonna be like, <laughs> I will offer you infinite nuggies in exchange for something. No, 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 no. no, the... no. I'm not giving up nuggies. I'm not giving up nuggies. I'm taking in nuggies. I, I knew exactly where Jake was going with that. <laughs> I mean, they're getting pretty predictable, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I almost said nuggies just in spite of it. Yeah, but I mean, like, what's the point of ruining my joke, man? You already did it at one time. Yeah, and it was hilarious. Yeah, and then we had to restart the whole episode. <laughs> we literally what? did... <laughs> Um, but anyways, welcome to Warlock. <laughs> welcome, Dale. Uh, welcome yes, friends. Dale. Hello. Uh, Dale, if you wouldn't mind, uh, go ahead and uh, tell us your experience with D&D. Um, so I've been playing for three years as of this December, and I started in Adventures League, and then nice, Adventures nice, League, nice. yeah, I know, Venture, I have things I have stuff about Adventures League. We're not going to talk about it. Um, well, it's okay. We corrupted you to homebrew and you've never gone back. No, I will. Yes and no. <laughs> In part. Oh, okay. We just so, started a game recently and literally oh, yeah. like every aspect of your character is homebrew. <laughs> what it is is though, like Adventures League led me to all the people I know that I do homebrews with now. Like I started my first, I my my main DM, which isn't Ben surprisingly. Uh, I met him through uh, a winter uh, winter splain game, and one of my other friends who I also DMs, I went through another like Adventures League, and they decided to keep me for my youth. Yeah, but then Adventures League got an update, and it turned into Pathfinder, and I was like. Ooh. Yeah, we too have scouted players from other games to join our games. <laughs> That's how we got Kevin and Justine. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> indeed. indeed, indeed. And that's also how we stole back Hayden and forced his game to be played every other week so we could play a game every other week too. And, and now it doesn't get played at all. Stopped being played. <laughs> yep. Wait, what game? Uh, it was Storm know. King's Thunder. Oh. And Tomb of Annihilation was the other one. Yep. Also, fuck Tomb of Annihilation. Oh, no, understand. when we started doing bi-weeklies, the other game was my game. Yeah, and it was so fun. I love that game. That's not Tomb of Annihilation, that's Prince of the Apocalypse. I don't know about that one. How about the other one? It's interesting. But anyways, Warlocks. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Um, so, starting with our key abilities for Warlocks, um, there is Charisma, and... Charisma, um, and... Yeah. <laughs> Charisma. We can all agree on That's this one. It's one charisma. Worry about. I guess con, but um, also charisma. <laughs> see, here, here's the thing. When I was looking at the key abilities for the class, it listed charisma and wisdom, but there's no reasonable thing that you benefit from wisdom other than, like, yeah. saving throws. Yeah, Nothing, well, here's the yeah. thing. Like, saving throws for wisdom for Warlock, because Warlock's another one of those classes that if they turn on the party, can just be like, hmm... So, uh, Hex Eldritch Blast, and then everyone's yeah. dead. <laughs> so, Pull the dead. <laughs> yeah, Warlocks can get pretty gnarly, up, especially up at those higher levels once they get those uh, Arcanums. Oof. Yikes. Because, yep, I mean, are deadly. a normal Warlock would try and save those for, like, a, an important fight. But uh, a turned Warlock that they already know that they're only going to have them for, like, a couple minutes, they're going to blast right through that that nice little storage of, of spells <laughs> yep. of non Eldritch blasts, you know, but anyways, yeah. So warlocks, everything's based off your charisma. It's your spell casting modifier. Also just, you are a charisma caster. So 
Um, I mean, it is kind of expected of you as, you know, if you're playing a warlock in a party, you might want to you might be kind of expected to be somewhat of the face of the party because all of your, you know, um, sk like skills checks are all going to be higher with your charisma modifiers. So charisma is pretty important for you. And let's be honest, man, like warlocks can sometimes be a little bit of a hassle to have in the party because of, you know, their patrons needing mm -hmm. them to do stuff that just yeah. pulls you off track. You're, so... you're on another person's agenda now. Yeah, so having that charisma to boost your spellcasting and actually prove yourself out in the field makes you useful enough to keep you around. <laughs> also, just be Gregor and talk your way out of every dangerous situation ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Except and for the also one argue, time. I think, uh, I think Dex can be also argued just for benefits of AC and yeah. initiative. On but Dex isn't good for everyone. Pretty important. Dex is a necessity period. That's yeah, never Dex your is, dumb Dex stat. is up there in importance for me for almost any character, yeah. I put Khan higher most of the time, but still. Unless it's like a deck specific class. But anyways. Anyways. That's pretty much for the key abilities. It's just charisma and more charisma and more charisma. But going on to the unique features. Um, starting at first level, Mike. Uh, yeah, so the, the first thing that you have is Pact Magic and... It's it's basically you you can be a spellcaster because you have a patron that gives you the ability to cast spells. Yep. That's what it is. <laughs> yep. Yep. You make a pact with somebody and they're like, Hey, you want some spells? And you're like, I would love some spells. And they're like, Here's one spell. And you're like, One spell? Can I get two? They're like, Fine, you get two spells. Like, but the <laughs> wizard just cast five in a row. And you're like, No, you get two. <laughs> <laughs> We're starting you hey, off slow. Hey, if you stick with me for a long enough time, I might think about three. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. might be an idea, okay? Yeah. Keep keep supplying the nuggies and we'll see what happens, you know? <laughs> Another thing to be noted though is that this is your su this is your subclass. You get your subclass at first level. Yup, yup. It's kind of your class. Point. You get your class at first level. Yeah. Because you can't really have a warlock without deciding who it is. Exactly. Get let it, let Which it is be why alone. it's so early on for warlocks. But yeah. anyways, yeah. Um, moving on to second level, you get an ability that is called Eldritch Invocations. And um, in your study of occult lore, you have uh, unearthed Eldritch Invocations. Fragments of forbidden knowledge that imbue you with an abiding magic ability. You gain two Eldritch Invocations of your choice at second level. A list of the available options can be found in the optional features page, by the way. And also, you gain certain Warlock... Uh, when you keep gaining Warlock levels, you'll slowly gain more Invocations, which is pretty dope. And additionally, when you gain a level in this class, you can choose one Invocation that you know to replace it with another Invocation that you can learn at this level, which is amazing i absolutely love it when any ability in DD &D has this line in it where every time you gain a level in this class you can change out this thing because you know sometimes you don't know exactly what path your character's going down when you have to take this ability and then later on you're like oh darn nards that would have made so much more sense for my character and it's so much and like it can synergize with the my other abilities way more that sucks just take another level Boom, swap it out. You're all good. Yes. Sometimes you don't take Agonizing Blast, and then all of your party mates are like, why aren't you doing enough damage? And yeah. suddenly, oh, oh, guys, I got Agonizing Blast now. Yeah. And then one last thing to be said about this is that the prerequisite um, for the invocations that refer to levels, it's referring to your Warlock levels, not overall levels. So keep that in mind. Yeah. Also, there's like a million of them. <laughs> yeah, there's a bunch. And they it's keep awesome. adding more. Yeah, Which I love. Like a whole bunch of them, so keep yeah. that in mind. But and I just think it's cool because every single warlock gets them, too. It's not even like that they made a subclass like that's like specialized in invocations. It's like all of them. They all get it. And so it just adds a lot more flavor to each warlock, if yeah. you ask me. Yeah, Very cool. Every warlock is special. It's not just you, you know? Yeah. Not just that guy over there that somehow made a pact with, like, Daddy Kane, you know? <laughs> so you come to my inn in the time of need. Then. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> but anyways, uh, that's it. Pretty much for Eldritch Invocations. You keep getting a bunch of them overall. 
at later levels. Um, I think you get eight if you go 20 full levels into it overall. So you'll get up to eight eventually. But they, they stagger in every couple of levels. You'll get a new one. But anyways, the next ability, Dale. At third level, you get Pact Boom. Third level, your otherworldly patron bestows a gift upon you for your loyal service. You gain one of the following features of your choice. You either get a buddy at Pact of the Chain, which is an extended fine familiar. You get Pact of the Blade, which imbues like a weapon of your choice with magic, and you can summon it at your pleasure and displeasure. Or you get a book called Pact of the Tome, and you can pick and choose like a couple cantrips and like maybe a first level spell if you take an invocation in other class spell lists. Nice. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's that's, that's cool. a really useful thing for any spellcaster to have. Yeah, there's there's a bit more to all of them, but I mean it's a lot to read just for just one ability. But it is yeah. kind of like a second subclass. I like to look at it honestly. Yeah, so, it's it's you either get you either get a magic sword from your sugar daddy, a a, a new dog, <laughs> <laughs> a brand Behind new door dog, two, a new dog, <laughs> or you get. You get a spell book, and it's instructions on how to cast spells that new normally can't cast. Yeah. And before selfie is just a warlock now. <laughs> um. <laughs> Listen. No, she isn't. We're not supposed yeah. to know that yet, Michael. How dare she's you? Not, guess she's not. Yet. She's not. She's not a straight barbarian. She's <laughs> not. not. She's not. Actually, so far, so far, selfie is the only character that I can think of that is dale's that is 100 percent one class it is the because it is the only one <laughs> it is the only so one far. other than my We're only 15 one. levels in boys it's, it's the only one other than your other one <laughs> i well here's the thing okay <laughs> once i learned how to multi-class i took it i was like man i want to do a little bit of this oh okay what happened like, I started playing a rogue when I first started playing. And then yeah. I talked to one of my friends. And they're like, oh, you want to play a bard? And I'm like, no, I want to play a rogue. No, you want to play a bard. No, <laughs> I wanted to play a rogue. Going on to the next ability. Yeah, so the next ability that you get is called Mystic Arcanum. And you get this first off at seven, or at 11th level. Not 7th, that would be stupid. Um, <laughs> yeah, what, what kind of idiot would say that, right? What but you get so Mystic dumb. Arcanum at 11th level, and then you get it again at 13th, 15th, and 17th. And each time you're getting uh, a new spell. So um, at 11th level, your patron bestows upon you a magical secret called an Arcanum. Choose one sixth level spell from the Warlock spell list of this Arcanum. You can cast your Arcanum spell once without expending a spell slot, and you must finish a long rest before you can do so again. At the higher levels, when you get more of these, uh, you you increase the level of the Arcanum. So at 13th level, you get a 7th level spell. Uh, at 15th level, you get an 8th level spell. And at 17th level, you get a 9th level spell. And you regain all uses after a long rest. And keep in mind, listeners, that... Um... You get these abilities, the 6th, 7th, 8th, and ninth level spells, in time that normal casters get those level spell slots in the first place. So you're pretty much, it's like their way of keeping you balanced in power levels. Of You only get one, but man, are you good at it, and it's going to be a whopper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. But yeah. Warlock spells are known to be a bit uh, whack. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, added to the... Uh, actually, probably should have pointed this out when we covered pa uh, pack magic, but um, when you cast a spell as a warlock, it's always casted at its highest level possible. So instead of having like an arrangement of like this many first-level spell slots, this many seconds, it's just you have the two spell slots that your sugar daddy gives you, and they're always the highest level. Yeah, and eventually so. you get like up to five. Yep. Spell slots, and they're all fifth level. Yep. It's just like Jesus. It's pretty great. But you probably are wondering what uh, there's got to be something more than all of these spells, right? There's got to be something better than all of this. This is all basic stuff. Well, at level twenty, you get an ability called Eldritch Master. 
What it allows you to do is you can take a minute to basically berate and annoy your <laughs> your patron to uh, give you all your spell slots back once per long rest. <laughs> I'm not even it kidding. Takes a minute. Once a day. It takes a minute. Yep. Once a day, you can just be like, give me my spell slots back, give me my spell slots back, give me my spell slots back, and he's like, <laughs> fine, and then you have your spell slots back. For the price of one nuggie, you get all your spell slots back. <laughs> nah, that's a 20 piece, man. Oof. Oof. Uh, no, 20 piece is like when you do a short rest and get all your spell slots back. As a DM, I would make you actually argue with them, like, in your mind's eye. I would, like, have a conversation. <laughs> I'd be like, why do you deserve spell slots today? <laughs> I'm your favorite, obviously. You're not my that's favorite. Actually... Harold's my favorite. <laughs> like, no, that actually like reminds Harold's me not... of another thing we should probably point out, is that um, <clears throat> you, as a warlock, you get your spell slots back on a short rest. Yeah. Unlike most other casters. And by most other casters, I mean, like, all of them. <laughs> all other casters. <laughs> that's, uh, that's pretty much it for the unique features, though. And we might as well skedaddle on over to the subclass area of the episode. And the first one that comes from the PHB is called the Archfey. Um, so, a thing to keep in mind, with the Archfey, you get um, one of those expended spell lists where you always have these spells prepared and they don't count towards prepared spells. And you get them from your subclass. And for this Archfey one, you get first level spells of Fairy Fire and Sleep, a second level of Combat Emotions and uh, Phantasmal Force, third level is Blink and Plant Growth, fourth Dominate Beast and Greater Invisibility, and fifth Dominate Person and Seeming. All really good spells, if you ask me. I don't think there's one in here that's not great. Also, really quick, uh, just to mention beforehand before going deeper, the subclasses are basically your patrons. Yes. Yes. This, so is, like, this whatever, is your otherworldly patron. This is like your patron narrowed down to like the the like broadest terms, right? So like this could be like anything from the Fate Wild that grants you this this magic, you know. They all would like fall under the Arch Fae category. It's like but, if patrons were in clicks. This is yeah. your clique. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're all just like kind of grouped together to to get you know, you, you can't have like this specific guy is your eldritch patron. You've got to choose between six dudes that can give you your power. No, it's like you can it's kind of generalized. But anyways, starting at first level, you also get this ability. Um your patron bestows upon you the ability to project the beguiling and fearsome presence of a fae. As an action, you can cause each creature in a 10-foot cube originating from you to make a wisdom saving throw against a warlock spell against your well, warlock spell D save DC. Little. The creatures that fail their saving throws are all charmed or frightened by you, your choice, until the end of your next turn. Once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a short or long rest. I would argue this isn't that good, except for the fact that it's a first level ability. Yeah. <laughs> like, you get this at level one. You know how many hit points you got at level one? Like, eight About to a twelve few. as a warlock? <laughs> About a few. <laughs> you know how awesome it would be to just make all of those bad guys go away for a little bit? <laughs> yeah. I think it's pretty alright. Um, starting at sixth level, you also get this ability called Misty Escape. You can vanish in a puff of mist in response to harm. When you take damage, you can use your reaction to turn invisible and teleport up to 60 feet into an unoccupied space you can see. You remain invisible until the start of your next turn or until you attack or cast a spell. Once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a short or long rest. That's not too bad. It's really good for getting away. Actually, uh, one of my war, uh, my only warlock that I ever made was Archfey, and he almost died because I forgot about this ability. I could have just gotten out of a grapple, and it was a vampire, and he almost like murdered me because of lowering my hit point maximum. <laughs> and I could have just like poofed out of there like three turns ago, and I almost died. <laughs> but it's just a better Misty Step. Yeah, it is a better Misty Step, and I think it's really good. Like. Like, Misty Step would be one of the few spells that I would have argued, like, why is this not in this subclass? But it's because you get a better thing. It's it's Misty Step, but better. The only bad part is that you can only do it once per short or long rest. 
The next ability that you get is called the Gullian Defenses. Uh, starting at 10th level, your, your patron teaches you how to turn the mind-affecting magic of your enemies against them. You are immune to being charmed, and when another creature attempts to charm you, you can use your reaction to attempt to turn the charm back on that creature. The creature must succeed on a wisdom saving throw against your warlock spell save DC or be charmed by you for one minute or until the creature takes any damage. That fixes your uh, low wisdom problem there, Ben. Yeah, that it does. <laughs> You're not turning on the party anymore because this is not limited per short or long rest. You can do this as much as you want. As frequent as you try, as people try to charm you. And if they try more than once, that's on them. <laughs> <laughs> the fools. Um, anyway, starting at 14th level, you get your last ability from your subclass. And it's called Dark Delirium. Um... You can purge a creature into an illusory realm. As an action, choose a creature that you can see within 60 feet of you. It must make a wisdom saving throw against your warlock spell save DC. On a failed save, it is charmed or frightened by you, your choice, for one minute until your concentration is broken, as if you're concentrating on a spell. So you can't concentrate on another spell while you do this, which kind of sucks, but oh well. This effect ends early if the creature takes any damage. Until the illusion ends, the creature thinks it is lost in a misty realm that appears... Uh, that appear the appearance of which you choose the creature can see and hear only itself you and the illusion you must finish a short or long rest before you can use this feature again this is like kind of sucky but also kind of great just because i love the idea of just messing with someone this hard <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time it's kind of like the same ability as your first level ability but yeah. but also like it's just like advanced and more messing with the person that you're doing it to. <laughs> uh, you know, like that episode really of funny. Black Mirror. It's like that. You know, you look at a person stuck somewhere and you just convince them. You know, yeah, do it it does do. kind of suck that it's it takes concentration though. Yeah, that's kind of lame. But I mean, it's understandable at the same time if you think about like what exactly it's doing. But imagine, like, RP-wise, this out of combat, though, as, like, yeah. it's a free action. That's yeah. chef kiss. Well, I mean, then it's only a minute long, though, is the problem. Mm. But anyways. In a minute. But anyways. That's it for the Archfey. Um, next up, I believe, is the Fiend. Benjamin. Indeed. So, you want to sell your soul to the devil? <laughs> you get some pretty cool perks <laughs> <laughs> and your retirement is guaranteed you should ask Cuphead oh. <laughs> you fool I already have uh, <laughs> so you've made a pact with the lower planes of existence welcome <laughs> as have I you get some extra spells on your expanded spell list for example burning hands and command or blindness deafness or scorching ray or Fireball, a great one, Stinking Cloud. How about Fire Shield, or Wall of Fire, or Flame Strike, or even Hollow? Those are all great spells. But the best mm -hmm. part about it, all at first level, this is just your signing bonus, you get Dark One's Blessing. At first level, when you reduce a hostile creature to zero hit points, you gain temporary hit points equal to your Charisma modifier plus your Warlock level. So it gets better as you go. <laughs> Yeah, nice. Am I, am I selling this to you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. At oh, level my. six, you get Dark One's own luck. You can call on your patron to alter fate in your favor. When you make an ability check or saving throw, you can use this feature to add a d10 to your roll. You can do so after seeing the initial roll, but before any other rolls effects occur. So, kind of have to be like, eh, did I pass? Did I not? I don't know yet. <laughs> but once you use this feature, you can't reuse it until you finish a short or long rest. But all you have to do is take a nap. And then, you know, you're lucky again. At 10th level, yeah. you get fiendish resilience. You're slowly becoming a devil. Congratulations. <laughs> At 10th level, you can choose one damage type. When you finish a short or long rest, you gain resistance to that damage type until you choose a different one with this feature. Damage from magical weapons or silver weapons ignores this resistance. I find that absolutely interesting. 
Because you could go into any kind of environment and just say, all right, there's a lot of cold things. I'm resistant to cold now. Or I'm resistant to acid because we're in a swamp. Or I'm resistant to fire because we're in a volcano. But at the same time, you are becoming more monstrous as silvered weapons now suddenly work well against you. Hmm. You're a werewolf now. That's interesting. Well, I mean... It, they, it says it ignores the resistance, so it's not yes. like they. If like a silver but weapon like, just deals slashing damage, it's not better than any other sword. But that's also what happens with like werewolves or magic yeah. weapons. Just if you have a magic resistance, like mm -hmm. if you're resistant to non-magical damage, like that's the same thing. You're just yeah. slowly becoming more not human. Or not mortal anymore, I should say. I guess you could choose, like, bludgeoning, slashing, Yeah, piercing. you could choose bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing. Like, if you know you're going headlong into a bunch of arrows, you can just be like, I'm gonna take a nap real quick, and when I wake up, I'll be resistant to piercing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, at 14th level, you get what is quite possibly one of the most terrifying abilities in all of Dungeons & Dragons. Hurl through hell. <laughs> when you hit a creature with an attack, that's the only prerequisite to this, <laughs> which if you're Eldritch Blasting by this point, you'll have, what, three attacks all in one go? So, you can use this feature to instantly transport the target through the lower planes. The creature disappears and hurdles through a nightmare landscape. At the end of your next turn, the target returns to the space it previously occupied, or the nearest unoccupied space. If the target is not a fiend, it takes 10d10 psychic damage as it reels from its horrific experience. <laughs> Once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a long rest. Dude, that place was so scary it made my brain hurt. Dude. I really wanted to get Gregor to this level so he could use this ability, because it's like, I, I think it, it, I would probably flavor it as like, you will feel what I feel for one round, and you will suffer for it. <laughs> I'm such an edgelord that I will put you into my own nightmare landscape, and you will take a completely ridiculous amount of psychic damage. <laughs> hey, I really did a lot to that man. You really, really did, really did man. for like three, three or four levels, I think. But I... And I still want to go back and play more. Oof. That boy's got I'm... trauma. No, we're like <laughs> we're like level six or seven in that game. Oh yeah, uh huh. Yeah. It's a little more. It's a little more. I was, a little more. I, think a little I was leveling more. you guys up every like two to three sessions. Though. But yes, that is. Pact of the Fiend. I really like Pact of the Fiend. I think it's really cool. <laughs> it's, it's it's pretty pog. It's just like, yeah, I sold my soul to the devil. Why? Because he gave me spells, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's pretty poggers, you know? Pog chance. Dude, hear me out. Hear me out. Fireball. <laughs> <laughs> he gave me burning hands, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So that's it for the fiend then. Moving on to the great old one. Damn. Okay. So the great old one's like everything you think about when you think about like Eldric horror. It's those like your patron is that being that wants to like technically destroy the world, you know? Like Cthulhu. Yeah. Um, I heard you like Cthulhu. <laughs> like Cthulhu, you know. It'd be like that. Uh I heard you like guys with tentacles on their face. I mean Well, let me introduce you to <laughs> but i mean like they're neat they're all like in that like also like in that madness kind of aspect with play with that like their expanded spell list it has dissonant whispers tasha's hideous laughter detect thoughts phantasmal force clairvoyance sending dominate beast evar's black tentacles you know the eldric stuff and dominate person and telekinesis but, like, my favorite, like, RP aspect of this one is, like, its initial ability. You get it first level, and then it's, like, awakened in your mind. Starting at first level, your alien knowledge gives you the ability to touch the minds of other creatures. You can telepathically speak to any creature you can see within 30 feet of you. You do not need to share a language with the creature for it to understand your telepathic utterances, but the creature must be able to understand at least one language. It's so good. It's just so good, because, like, <laughs> I had... 
I played a I played a level a campaign a campaign like a session where someone got kidnapped by goblins and I was talking in their head and for some reason my dad was like roll performance and apparently I was pretending to be their god I don't know that they're just like oh there's a voice in my head <laughs> great old one nice. uh, the next ability at level six is anthropic ward you learn to magically ward yourself against attack and turn an enemy's fail strike into good luck for yourself. When a creature makes an attack roll against you, you can use your reaction to impose disadvantage on that roll. If the attack misses you, your next attack your next attack roll against that creature has advantage if you make it before the end of your next turn. Once you finish once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a long rest. So it's like another one of the like lucky esque things. Sort of. I think that one's a shorter long rest. You sh- you just gotta take a nap. You gotta take a nap. You just gotta take a nap and extra pro. You get all your spell slots back, dude. All the warlock is just take a nap. Just take a nap. Take a nap, bro. Take Cough. take take a little bit of the edge off. Maybe uh maybe your uh sugar daddy will come visit you in your dream. Maybe maybe he'll, maybe he'll give you some good shit. Maybe maybe. Um. God, made me think about coffee locks. Uh, the next <laughs> level, you get thought shields. Your thoughts can't be read by telepathy or any other means unless you allow it. You also have resistance to psychic damage, and whenever a creature deals psychic, psychic, psychic damage to you, that creature takes the same amount of damage you do. So That's it doesn't pretty you. crazy, especially with the uh, Tasha's coming out just recently. There's a lot more psychic stuff going on. Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. I've only looked at the feats, and I'm sort of really loving it. And I know one of my friends is gonna hate that book because <laughs> they hated Xanthars. Why? Why would they hate Xanthars? They hated Xanthars because Xanthars like made it like balance in the unbalance in the players' favor. Like that's the only reason. Just, it's not a player versus better. DM thing, though. Be better. Yeah. That's all Be you better. have to do. Be better. Just learn how to balance encounters. Yeah. Yep. That's what Ben always does. We keep bringing our characters, and we're like, dude, our characters, we have such good stats and, and whatnot. And, and then Ben's bet. just like, hmm. Our, our characters <laughs> will get into a battle, and then if we're doing really good, then Ben will be like, eh, I kind of want this battle to take a little bit longer. Let me throw a couple more people to just kind of show <laughs> and then, up. And then, <laughs> and then that one party that has all new players and me, who unfortunately all of us rolled kind of bad on stats, oh. <laughs> we all get TPK'd by one creature. You made new players <laughs> Because Ben's TPK'd? so used to, like, low-key overpowering the enemies. Oh but God. that one was... Here's the thing. Bad. I threw a CR3 at a party of five level threes. <laughs> it was a water weird. Okay, to be fair, Not though, <laughs> one of the five level threes is a kobold off of the kobold stat block. So, like, it wasn't only one of their abilities not negative. Their yeah, scores. it was dex. It was dexterity. Oof. Yeah. And they were a caster. So they're extra squishy. Yeah. But anyways. Yeah. Um, the last ability you get from this specific subclass, at level 14, you get Create Thrall. You gain the ability to infect a humanoid's mind with the alien magic of your patron. You can use your action to touch an incapacitated humanoid. That creature is then charmed by you until a remove curse is cast on it. The charm condition is removed from it, or you use this feature again. You can communicate telepathically with that charmed creature as long as the two of you are on the same plane of existence. You want a henchman? You get one. <laughs> but that's four henchmen. And if anyone ever finds out that all it takes is a spell slot to get him out of here, he might not be too happy with you afterwards. But I mean, that's tomorrow's problem, right? So that's future me problem. Exactly. <laughs> Present me's fine. Present me has got a henchman. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's always great. If he really didn't want it, then uh, should have used remove curse. It's well, fine. Just, just remember, if your character is ever like considering an issue that could happen, 
just remember, it's tomorrow's issue. <laughs> also, like, what if this henchman's not as good as the next henchman you find? Then you get a new yeah. henchman. Yeah. You call that whole henchman. That old henchman's old news. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he might be a problem because maybe he's, like, really mad at you and, like, comes after to kill you or something. Like, but that's know. when your future I henchman... I mean, at this point, you're a level 14 henchman. warlock, so, like... Your old That's a hench that he has to choose to make. <laughs> your your <laughs> old henchman is just going to train so hard and become the next BBEG. Like, yeah, but that that another new henchman. That You've already got an Arcanum at that point, so like. That's that's up to him. By fourteenth level, you've gotten two he has Arcanum. Two Arcanums, yeah. Two Arcanums. So you've gotten sixth and seventh level. And you got three spell slots. What it sounds none like of this, is none of this baby two spell slots. Old henchman said, "Take me back," and I'm like. I mean, if you insist. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyways, let's move on. <laughs> Before this gets too bad. Uh, moving on to Hexblade, <laughs> the next subclass. And um, if it's not easily, uh, easily um, discernible, Hexblade is based off of like some, ty- some sort of Shadowfell type creature, typically. Um, but the starting spells that you get from being a Hexblade, the expended spell list, includes at first level you get Shield and uh, Wrathful Smite. Second level spells you have Blur and Branding Smite, Blink and Elemental Weapon for third level spells, Phantasmal Killer and Staggering Smite for fourth level, and five level spells of Banishing Smite. Ooh. Gotta love it. And oh. Cone of Cold. Two pretty good spells. I, I think all of these spells are pretty good uh, uh, about and about but starting at first level you actually get two abilities with this warlock subclass because that's just how poggers this class is um <laughs> starting at first level you get a thing called hexblade's curse and um you gain the ability to place a uh, bail for clerk baleful curse on someone as a bonus action choose one creature you can see within 30 feet of you that car that target is cursed for one minute the curse ends early if the target dies you die or you are incapacitated until the curse ends you gain the following benefits you gain a bonus to damage rolls against that cursed target the bonus equals your proficiency bonus which is kind of crazy honestly um any attack roll you make against that cursed target is a critical hit on a roll of 19 or 20 so you get a cheater crit And also, if the cursed target dies, you regain hit points equal to your Warlock level plus your Charisma modifier, which can be a lot. You know, you're getting into the high numbers once you get up there. Um, You uh, and also you can't use this feature again until you finish a shorter long rest. So you can only Hexblade curse one dude, one short rest. So just take a nap. (laughs) Take a nap. Just take a nap, and you can curse another guy and just like (laughs) absolutely demolish him because. Oh my goodness. Anyways. Oh, and also, never does it say that it, this takes concentration. So you could Hexblades curse a guy and Hex them. <laughs> and just really stack up that damage. Just chef kiss. Yeah. But starting at first level, you also get this ability. It's called Hex Warrior. You acquire the training necessary to effectively arm yourself for battle. You gain proficiency in medium armor, shields, and martial weapons. The influence of your patient also allows you to mystically channel uh, your will through your particularly weapon, particular weapon. Whenever you finish a long rest, you can touch one weapon that you are proficient with and that lacks the two-handed property. When you attack with that weapon, you can use your charisma modifier instead of strength or dexterity for the attack and damage rolls. Uh, this benefit lasts until you finish a long rest. If you later gain the Pact of the Blade feature, this benefit expends, extends to every packed weapon you conjure with that feature, no matter the weapon's type. Nice. That's, that's pretty crazy. You literally don't even have to worry about any other stats other than charisma. Even though you're like a front, like kind of a front, quote unquote, frontline caster at this point because you know you can hexblade curse whatever you're fighting and then you if you kill it you heal a whole bunch and you know it it gives the idea of like you could possibly be a frontline caster because you also get like proficiency in armors and shields and such and such so this can get pretty crazy up there yeah um starting at sixth level you get a, a cursed specter um, you can curse the soul of a person you slay, temporary bind- temporarily binding it to your service. 
When you slay a humanoid, you can cause its spirit to rise from its corpse as a specter, the statistics for which are in the mon monster manual. When the specter appears, it gains temporary hit points equal to half your warlock level. Roll initiative for the specter, which has its own turns. It obeys your verbal commands, and it grants and it gains a special bonus to its attack rolls equal to your charisma modifier. The specter remains in your service until the end of your next long rest, at which point it vanishes to the afterlife. Once you bind this a specter with this feature, you can't use this feature again until you finish a long rest. No nap. Nap won't do it for you. But that's okay. I, I, I'll take that. This one is good enough for me that I don't need to be able to do it possibly a bunch of times in one day just because I take a lot of naps. <laughs> I'm okay with doing this once per day. <laughs> I, th I still think it's pretty good. You literally get to add a whole new creature to combat. That's all, uh, completely under your control. Anyways. Uh, starting at 10th level, you get an ability called Armor of Hexes. Your hex grows more powerful. If the target cursed by your hex blade's curse hits you with an attack roll, you can use your rea uh, reaction to roll a d6. On a 4 or higher, the attack misses, uh, instead misses you, and regard regardless of the roll. you Someone could roll a natural 20 on you. And you could just... You, you got that boy hex, hex blade cursed? Roll a d6? Yeah. Hey, look at that. It's literally a 50-50. Four or more, he misses. Three or less, fine. It goes through. But like that natural 20, out of the window. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Sucks to suck, loser. Get good. <laughs> also, it's easier for me to crit on you. <laughs> Anyways. Next up, you get Master of Hexes. Starting at 14th level, you can spread your Hexblade's curse. Uh, you can sp spread your Hexblade's curse from uh, a slain creature to another creature. When the creature caused by your Hexblade's curse dies, you can apply the, cr uh, the curse to a different creature you can see within 30 feet of you, provided you aren't incapacitated. When you apply this curse in your way, you don't regain hit points from the death of the previously cursed creature. So it becomes Hex. Um... But it it becomes hex, but it doesn't have an end to when it is cast. Technically, you're always like Hexblade's curse is like always activated. It just might not be on somebody. It just takes the bonus action to move it to it, them again. So, like you could literally have Hexblade curse throughout all of combat. You could worry about hexing next turn. <laughs> Let's get that Hexblade's curse out now. That's a, f that's a future turn problem. Yeah. <laughs> right? I don't know. I just think it's really good just because like, it takes this like one ability of Hexblade's curse and it just keeps adding to it. And I kind of like it when D&D &D 5e does that. Where it's just like, oh boy, you got this one thing, but oh my goodness. Are oh you boy, you're going to do it well. <laughs> Oh boy, how are you going to get around this one, huh? You little sneaky rogue. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, I digress. That is Hexblade. I think it's a pretty good I think it's a pretty good subclass. I would argue this is uh one of the best. You can uh fight me. Oh, we'll be fighting all right. <laughs> See, I like celestial warlocks because oh. You're basically a healer, and it's that fantastic. Exactly what that is. The celestial, uh, the the celestial patron will come from the upper planes and give you more of a radiant energy. Uh, the extra spells that you get to choose from at first, the first level spells are cure wounds and guiding bolt. The second level spells are flaming sphere and lesser restoration. The third level spells are Daylight and Revivify. The fourth level spells are Guardian of Faith and Wall of Fire. And the fifth level spells are Flame Strike and Greater Restoration. So you can see that there's definitely a lot more cleric spells. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Revivify, that's a pretty big one. Kind of sucks that it has to use your spell slot because you don't have any. But, oh boy. In a time crunch, maybe it's the cleric that goes down. <laughs> Yeah. They can't quite cast that spell when they're dead, so 
it's pretty great that you have it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's pretty great. And at first level, uh, you also get to learn Sacred Flame and Light as extra cantrips that do not count against the cantrips known. Uh, you also That's get an abyss. Oh yeah, dude! Sacred six Flame cantrips now total. Sacred Flame, especially, I love it. Uh, you also get Healing Light, which you gain the ability to channel Celestial Energy to heal wounds. You have a pool of D6s that you spend to fuel this healing, and the number of dice in the pool is 1 plus your Warlock level. As a bonus action, you can heal one creature you can see within 60 feet of you, spending dice from the pool. The maximum number of dice you can spend at once equals your Charisma modifier, minimum 1. Roll the dice you spend, add them together, and restore a number of hit points equal to the total. Your pool regains all expended dice when you finish a long rest. Once again, man, you're just a healer. Hey, it's like I always say, bro. A party of healers knows no fear. <laughs> <laughs> we got a celestial a warlock. We got oh. a divine soul sorcerer. <laughs> it's okay. We Just wait until I get to the final ability of this cleric. of this subclass, because it is great. Uh, but the sixth level is called Radiant Soul. Your link to the Celestial allows you to serve as a conduit for radiant energy. You have resistance to radiant damage, and when you cast a spell that deals radiant or fire damage, you can add your charisma modifier to one radiant or fire damage roll of this spell against one of its targets. So, yeah, you you cool. just get to you get resistance and you get to deal extra damage, which is always yeah, nice. That's awesome. That's all I do. At tenth level, you get celestial resilience. You gain temporary hit points whenever you finish a rest, short or long. These temporary hit points equal your warlock level plus your charisma modifier. Additionally, choose up to five creatures you can see at the end of the rest. Those creatures each gain temporary hit points equal to half your warlock level plus your charisma modifier. So they don't get as much as you, but they Not still quite. get a little bit. Yeah, it's still pretty it's good. Innate, inspiring leader. So you don't gotta waste one of your like ASIs on a feat. Yeah, you got it automatically. That's true. That's true. I'm always a fan of like having one of those where it's just like, hey, now I don't gotta worry about taking that feat that I was probably gonna take. Exactly. Yeah, and it's always nice to have those temporary hit points. You know, going into a big fight, just just having that little bit of a buffer. Anything that gives temporary hit points is kind of really good, in my opinion, because there's not really, like, I mean, they're starting to become more and more things that give you temporary hit points, but it's on, like, the scale of, like, how much stuff gives you. It's on the, like, lesser side, I feel like. A lot, yeah. a lot less abilities give you temporary hit points, which is great, because if you get more temporary hit points, the other ones just go away. <laughs> I mean, for those classes, it's just pre-healing, because then you don't have to spend your die to do it later. It's exactly, free. yeah. It's pre-healing. Yeah. Yep. Now, have you ever wanted to just, like, you know, cheat death? I mean... I mean... I mean, uh, I, mean I personally haven't been in a uh, situation where uh, I felt like I needed to. <laughs> I mean, I mean, uh, I, 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 I'm just going to go ahead and say yes. I'm going to say yes I mean, on that. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm, I, I wouldn't really enjoy dying, I don't think. So, I guess. I mean, if I can choose to say no. Because here's the thing. <laughs> like, if I had the option, I'm sure I wouldn't turn it down. Because but... at 14th level, you get an ability called Searing Vengeance. The radiant energy you channel allows you to resist death. When you have to make a death saving throw at the start of your turn, you can instead bring spring back to your feet with a burst of radiant energy. You regain hit points equal to half your hit point maximum, and then you stand up if you so choose. Each creature of your choice that is within 30 feet of you takes radiant damage equal to 2d8 plus your charisma modifier and is blinded until the end of the current turn. Once you use that feature, you cannot use it again until you finish a long rest. I heard you like to live. <laughs> so, here's the thing, though. Do you then take a turn? Because it says when you have to make a death saving throw. At the start of you turn. Yeah, okay, yeah. So then yeah. you have a full turn yeah. afterwards. Yeah. You have an action bonus and movement after yeah. that. 
and your and movement you isn't even halved from you having to stand up because you stand up with this ability. Yes. That's kind of crazy. That's why I said Celestial Warlock, like, it's it's okay, you know, you're just a little bit of a Healy boy, but then you get to the 14th level ability and it's like, all right, I see why you're here. <laughs> <laughs> I see why I see why we've come to this solution. I mean, it's, it's also that like you know, I'm not usually just signing your life away to your patron. This one's at least up there. That is hot. Because there's there's like a few things that's going on there. Like one, you're avoiding death. You're no longer dying. Two, you regain half your hit points, so you don't have to heal up anymore. And three, you're dealing damage to everybody else without even having to use your turn. Also, with this subclass, it's a lot less uh, morally questionable <laughs> because, you know, you, 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 it's, it's a god that's giving you this stuff, you know? It's, it's, it's one of the guys up there, not one of the guys That doesn't make it any less questionable. That doesn't make it any less questionable. It's I not mean, the fiend. Bit, it's, not the fiend. <laughs> it's not the fiend. It's not the fiend. <laughs> or the great old one. Like, those You're homies, going up. You're not going they, down. Only want, they only want bad stuff, I feel like. Like, whatever they're up to, probably not good. Hey, hey, hey. The, the devils literally just player. want to kill the demons, bro. The the Archfey and the, he the Hexblade, I could be like, eh, it could go either way. Right? Right? Great old one. Way. Do you know how but tricksy like, the Fey are, my guy? I, I know. I know. That's why they're not like... Those are good guys, you know. Well, like, and I, I mean, they might to, hide something. To to Ben's credit, Ben is more of a fiend warlock kind of guy. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Be, being me as the celestial warlock, you know, my whole job is kind of to kill undead and fiends. So hey, it'd be listen, offensive man. to him. Listen, man. <laughs> yeah, I just my got whole job. A really cool sword. <laughs> <laughs> no way! I got a cool sword too from my patron. My, my sword is technically cooler though. That's a that's a trade. -in. I don't but need a cool sword. I just live. But my DM is cool, so he gave me a cool sword. See. But the finger guns. The finger guns. When you but insult also, Jacob, but also like compliment really Jacob cool. at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> he gave me a cool sword. What can I say? Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Oh, <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> yeah. there's also another subclass. Uh, it's called the Undying. It's in Sword Coast Adventures, and if you'd like to go check that out, you can. And also, I mean, I guess we should start saying there's even more subclasses that are in Tasha's that you can check out. But we'll cover those another day. Another like time. the genie. Yeah, that one's pretty cool. But anyway, fathomless and all that. Yeah. yeah, but, but yeah, yeah, if you want to go check out the Undying subclass, you can go do that. You can find it in Sword Coast Adventures Guide. But yeah, so that's subclasses. Um, yeah, moving on over to role play. So what what do you guys when you think about warlocks? What do you guys like tend to lean towards role play wise? Yeah, I I like to think of it a lot like uh you know you have someone who is supplying you with this well of power. They're giving you all these abilities, and all you got to do in return is just make the effort to, like, do their bidding. Do their will, you know? Make it your own will. <laughs> That's all it some... takes is uh, doing whatever they say, you know? <laughs> Basically, uh, you know, you got a sponsored deal, now you got to be a sellout. Don't touch my you know? <laughs> All and right. You don't have a sponsor All deal. of a sudden, you're a ride or die. Okay. <laughs> to any potential people that want to sponsor us, we'll sell out. I'm just saying. <laughs> Roll twenty. <laughs> D and D Great Beyond. What's shadow up? Shadow legend. Great shadow <laughs> legend. Skill share. <laughs> yo, criti <laughs> yo, critical role. If you want to talk, let hit us up. <laughs> critical role right. sponsors us. I'm gonna be bro, serious for a second, from bro. Other people. I don't know if they're gonna sponsor. <laughs> us. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be real serious for a second. I actually really like skill share. <laughs> 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 it's it's pretty neat. <laughs> so masterclass though, as well. Hashtag. Hashtag not a sponsor, but we could be. <laughs> Hashtag not a sponsor, but I recommend them personally. <laughs> There's some D&D &D stuff on there. It's pretty neat. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyways. Anyways. Ben, how's your, yes. what's, your, what's your warlock look like? 
in so, gameplay-wise. So, here's the thing you gotta keep in mind that I feel like a lot of people don't keep in mind when they make a Warlock. Your Warlock, regardless of who they made the pact with, they made a pact with some cr- entity they don't fully understand. They went through some questionable means to acquire power. And you had better have a really good reason why. Or your warlock means nothing to me. But DM daddy, my power. (laughs) (laughs) You had better had a good reason. You know what Gregor's reason was? So that he could be reunited with his wife and child in in hell. He's doing everything he can for the power of love. Yeah, on, back up, back this up. is yeah. the power of love. Oh, because his his wife is a succubus. Yeah. Oh, okay. I she's like, all she's also the person who he has a pact with. Yes. I was like, You're kid evil? What? <laughs> he also has a pact with his wife. Until well, it was transferred to someone to be. else. Yeah. He used to, yeah, and then she got more powerful than his wife, so it's like... Mm. Someone else took over his contract. Yeah, Listen. the person that gives his wife power was like, hmm, that pawn is now mine. <laughs> 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 Which leads me to how I like to look at warlocks from a roleplay as perspective, is that you're a pawn in another person's plan. Let's be let's be real here, you know? it's you're, you're, You do what they want you to do, because if you don't, you kind of suck. <laughs> You're kind of just bad. But, you know, whether that plan is for the good or for the bad, you know, that can depend on your patron. But keep in mind, though, any pawn can become any piece other than the king once it reaches the other side of the board. So, you got hope out for you. I think, I think you got potential, you know? Just gotta make it across the board. Yeah, you just you just gotta make it across the board without some random rook or bishop or whatever to just be like, yeet. <laughs> 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 Maybe you'll be that lucky pawn. Maybe you'll be the first one that like gets killed really quickly. But maybe you'll be that. But lucky maybe you one. won't. Maybe you won't. <laughs> maybe you'll become the rook. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Maybe you'll be the one taking out pawns. You become one day, the queen. You become the one queen. One day, exactly. Exactly. You can become secondhand man. Secondhand. Oh god. You Wait. guys, you all think about warlocks differently than me. I think of them <laughs> like as like. Okay, so I technically build faces, but I'm a really bad party face. Mm-hmm. So I always make my warlocks be like they're like role play wise they're sociable and they're like. Very like polite or whatever. Sometimes did see. Be like <laughs> polite that. or whatever. <laughs> or they're amicable. But then like usually there's like some either like l- under the surface reason. Like my one of my warlocks is like technically evil. And usually they're like ditzy just like for face value, but like when it comes down to the nitty gritty, then they're like, I'm here, I have opinions. You need to listen to our group. Persuasion. Mm-hmm. I'm lying to you. Deception. <laughs> Just, that's how it goes. I feel that. Although, yeah. having a good reason to make a pact does not necessarily mean you can't be sociable as well. It's true. Yeah. Matter of fact, I would say you should be sociable, as you somehow managed to convince this entity to give you magic. <laughs> <laughs> this entity who, under normal circumstances, probably wouldn't care. Yeah. But DM Daddy, give me power. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm comfortable with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what fair. I think I'm a go. Oh, hey, wait, 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 guys, guys, guys. Do you see that over there? Do you see that? Where? Do you see that? Oh, someone's walking in. Oh, why, hello. Welcome to, <laughs> Welcome to, Ben's... to Ben's low level li- low magical item store. <laughs> When did you get a bell? I love it. Do it again. Do it again. Oh, there's a second club store coming in. <laughs> <laughs> it's not at all the like walking into a store bell of like the ones they hang on the door. Hey, but sometimes it is though. Bell? Sometimes it, it really is like that. It was well worth the meme. <laughs> Dude. Dude. On the table. Crap, now there's two of them. I'm only I'm the only guy in here. Uh don't steal. <laughs> I'll be right with you. 
<laughs> All right. Ah, a warlock. Welcome then to my magic item shop. I have a couple things you might find interesting. I notice there's a fiend lover amongst you. For that, <laughs> for that lover of fiends amongst you, I have a very special weapon. Especially since I notice he carries a magic sword. This is specifically for Pact of the Fiend, um, <laughs> with with the the, the blade feature. Pact yep. of the blade. Pact of the blade. Yeah. So, <laughs> if you are both <laughs> of those things, I have a very <laughs> special weapon for you. It's called a Hellfire weapon. Uh, it's an uncommon magic item. I just found out about it today. So there you go. Uh, this weapon is fashioned from infernal iron and traced with veins of hellfire that shed dim light in a five foot radius. Any humanoid killed by an attack made with this weapon has its soul funneled into the river Styx, where it's reborn instantly as a Lemur devil. I would just like to say that is literally the perfect weapon for a Pact of the Fiend warlock. <laughs> My pact is to sentence people's souls to mm -hmm. hell to serve my lord. That is so good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is so good. Oh my god. I hey Jake, when we ever play that game again, you should give me one of those. <laughs> I'll use it. I will use it. Gregor will become a melee you. fighter. I'll give it to you as a blowgun. <laughs> Is yes. blowgun included in the list of things it can be? Yes. It is, it is yeah. now. Also, <laughs> net. The net, yes. I'll throw the you net on them and net. then Eldritch blast the crap out of them. That works so well, though. Like, you, know. you just throw them on them and then slowly there's. Yep. And then you just net their soul. Why not? Wait, well, no, because it's once they kill them with that weapon, right? Uh... Killed by an attack made with this weapon. Net doesn't do damage, so that wouldn't be really which makes it all the more funny for me to give it to you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I won't do you like that. The second item I have actually kind of breaks Warlock. Not like, you know, this is a Howard kind of way, but in a this shouldn't happen kind of way. It's called the Pearl of Power. And the Pearl of Power, featured in our Sorcerer episode, gives you an extra spell slot once per day. Yay! Um, thing is... If the, the spell slot that you expended and you're trying to get back is 4th level or higher, the new one is 3rd level. So if you're a warlock whose spell slots have already evolved past 3rd level, you can get a 3rd level spell anyway. <laughs> but technically, anytime you, it's not said that like you have only 3rd level spell slots, or like you have only 4th level spell slots. It's yeah. just said, stated that any spell you cast is casted at its highest level possible. So technically, that third level spell slot would still be a fifth level spell, if you're, you know, that high. I mean, for Warlocks, a spell slot's a spell slot. Spell a spell slot's a spell yeah. slot. But I, I would argue against that, because you would have fifth level spell slots. It's like, yeah, I only have fifth level spell slots. But since I gained this one artificially, I technically have four fifth level spell slots and one third level spell slot. I wouldn't now, I don't think I would care as the DM. I'd just be like, yeah, that's a fifth level. I mean, it's a third level spell slot. You use it. You can't cast your fourth or fifth level spells from it. You can only cast your thirds and lower, but they're still cast at fifth level. That makes I mean, sense. hey, you choose. It's your choice, man. But, yeah, that's how I would run it. Yeah. Cuz cuz that's I would how it not... says in the book is that it run, it goes at the highest level possible. Yeah. All right, if that's your ruling, man, my ruling is a little different. My ruling is you could have threw those spell slot. <laughs> 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 or lower. You could have lower. Um, I, and I think it's funny. It's like, man, that spell was weaker than it was normally, man. What's up with you? Oh, I gained this, like, I ate this thing earlier, and it was... <laughs> <laughs> it was I ate this thing earlier. Ben, did you just eat a pearl? Yeah, I keep okay? it inside me. It's It's... So I can never have it stolen from me. You okay, my guy? I just, whenever, I just, whenever it passes, he just re-eats it. Do you oh, no! oh, God. Oh, no. The third thing I have for the aspiring <laughs> warlock is the Rod of the Pact Keeper. Plus one. Nice. It's a, it requires a tomb to buy a warlock, so it, it has to be in this episode, of course. 
While holding this rod, you gain a plus one bonus to spell attack rolls and to the saving throw DCs of your warlock spells. Nice. In addition, you can regain one warlock spell slot as an action while holding the rod. Can't use this property again until you finish a long rest. But that's a second spell slot that, that you one, get back a day. That one you can't argue. That's no, up to fit. there's no arguing. Yeah. There's no argument for that one. So what we have here is the perfect thing to make your Pact of the Fiend with, the perfect thing to gain back spell slots, and another perfect thing to gain back spell slots. I see that uh, a couple of these other spell classes didn't get as much special treatment as uh, possibly the one that Ben likes the most. <laughs> crazy. What was that? Crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What? That's weird. That's weird. Mm -hmm. I'll just uh, blast. Don't ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> look, 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 look. If you were not packed to the fiend, there are things out there that are perfect for you, but I, they're not uncommon items. That's the problem. Just, just I mean, let it be known that Ben doesn't care enough to look hard enough for them. So, Moving actually, on. I have one kidding. off the top of my head. There is if, one. Great old one. The tentacle rod. Ben. It's a great item. Staff, Staff of the Python is not... Yes. Is not. <laughs> Dale's great. really fighting for it. Yes, Listen, no. you need it. So you're not. You're squishy. Say you're. Say you're a warlock. Whatever. It doesn't matter what subclass. You're squishy. Da, you're not right here. You're right here. You're not that squishy. Yes, you are. Because I never put my next highest in con. You're squishy. It's your own fault. And suddenly, wow, look crying, at this girl. What's wrong with you? that can protect you. And it's your buddy. You get a buddy. You okay, can talk you can with the snake. A, you, you can just have a dog, though. Or Arguably, you can talk with the snake. Staff of the Python is way better for an Archfey than any of the other ones. And that's only because Archfey can be kind of nature-y. I mean, anyone can be nature-y if you smoke it enough. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, but no, dude, I just had an idea for a warlock. Oh, what? what? Packed to the Archfey, packed with Grassy the Leprechaun. <gasps> you just roll joints all the time and smoke. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. So here's the thing. Every time you roll a joint, the, the price of like Grassy's like patronage is you have to roll two and one gets magically sent off to him. Every time. <laughs> every day. Every day you roll two of them, and then yeah, one gets sent off to him. You roll one up for the patron. Instead of your spell slides, it's just joints. You pull joints. one out and In light it. In real combat, like... you smoke a joint real quick, <sighs> and then a spell happens. Yep. A spell happens. Yup. <laughs> oh my goodness. So That'd be fantastic. On, <laughs> moving on to uh, the keynote character of today. Oh. Yeah. This, this gal from one of my other homebrews. One that's an actual full warlock, and I won't be multi-classing, Jacob. <laughs> okay. I'm just, I'm just pointing out things that I've observed, okay? I mean, you're not hey, wrong. Hey, people can say the exact same thing for me in the fact that I never multi-class. I always I mean, go 20 and do. There's, there's nothing wrong with either one. Sometimes you want to dip over here. Sometimes you just want to eat from your own plate. It's fine. Sometimes People can say the same thing with me and bards. <laughs> <laughs> Michael always multi-classes in the bard at some point. Always got to take a little bit of bard. Just, just, just Michael's just like, just enough for expertise. Come on. <laughs> he doesn't want expertise. Just enough for jack, jack of all trades. That's all I need. Who doesn't want jack of all trades? I just, I just, I, I just want to be at better at initiative. Angry. And then I look if at I... Michael all angry because he's too good at everything. Like, I just I just want to have better initiative, man. It's just a dip. Just just a little. It's a taste. I just want to steal other people's spells. Come on, come on. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Just enough to get extra spells. Come on, just. just, just... <laughs> I don't have a problem. You have a problem. Oh <laughs> just, my god. Just, just, just enough. Just enough to get that twentieth level ability. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Regal knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> I hope oh, Sam yeah. Regal knows what you're talking about. I hope he hears this and is like, I know exactly what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he posts a video online of him going, I know what he's talking about. And then it has no context. <laughs> oh, you know. You know. 
Listen, Sam Regal, if you do that, we'll know. It's okay. We'll know. We'll know. We'll know what you're talking about. Hey, I know what he's talking about. (laughs) We'll post our own video about Sam Regal's video, but we can't connect the two. Yeah. We'll just post another one. That is. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. (laughs) If people get it, they'll get it. Okay, if you know, you know. You know, you know. Yep. The more you know. The more you know. So, Dale, tell or us Dale, about your character. Your character. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's my one full warlock, and she's in a Way of the Wicked campaign, where if you don't know what that is, Way of the Wicked is where you are the antagonist for once. So. For once? For once. You know, well, like, you're purposely the bad guy. My party always starts out being like, I'm like, these are the good guys. And then throughout the campaign, I keep thinking to myself, these are not the good guys. (laughs) (laughs) Well, this one's on purpose. These guys don't give a crap about anybody else. The characters are good, but the players are evil. (laughs) I I mean, sometimes I could see you running away of the Wicked campaign. I could see it going very, very... Well, question mark? Question mark. Question yeah. mark. You know when you play Bowser in Mario Party and you're against everyone else? It's like that. But you're the DM. You just have <laughs> the best die just because you're Bowser. Exactly. Oh, but she, she's good. Uh, she's gonna be straight. Great old one warlock. Uh, she's, she's, of course, maxed charisma. You're and... not gonna start dipping elsewhere once you hit 14? I actually won't. I won't start dipping elsewhere with this character. I have a question for okay, you okay. about this character. What yeah. is your character's name? Uh, Siren Day Palantir, but she goes by Rin. What is her that, race? She is an Eladrin. Of course. Ooh, surprising. Of course. Surprise, surprise. It's Literally, elf. so when we first met Dale, my first impression after seeing her play like two or three different characters was... All right, so she's an elvish warlock. <laughs> Every time. Every Pretty time. Much, no, honestly, you can't even say that anymore. She's an Aladrin warlock. Every time. Because the Aladrin. I have yet to. I don't think I, I remember a Dale character that isn't on Aladrin. Because I love elves. That's what it is. That's all it is. I'm just projecting, and I'm always gonna play an elf, it's, and just you know. It's elf, oh, but with seasons. And if you're, if you're going to play an elf, you might as well be an Aladrin and get that free Misty step. Exactly! Yeah. I get fancy hair. Who doesn't want fancy hair? <laughs> I, mean, I always have fancy hair. You know me. I waste... Uh, the, one of the hardest parts of character making is finding a picture, man. And I can't draw. You just that, That's when you just have friends that draw and pay them $50 a month so that you can talk to them for an hour a month and get art done during that hour. But I don't have money. <laughs> <laughs> I babysit and I run errands all the time. Oh, Anyways, it's... tell us more about uh, Rin here. Oh, yeah. So there she's in an evil campaign. Uh, how it initially started that we had to break out of this high security prison. And That's cool. I'm all for that. Probably... Uh, did it because you know she might have killed her uncle, who uh, might have played a hand in killing off her family in an arson fire. Ah, you, know, uh, you know it happens. There seems just to be a lot of unknowns thing. here. <laughs> What's with all these might have? Might have maybe. I mean, you look at her; she just looks like a nice gal. She, she might have already it, engaged it with the heroes' party, and they have a favorable opinion of her. Maybe. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm not the DM. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know these things. I don't know these things. I can only assume because they look besotted, apparently. I don't know. I, I, don't know. I, I choose to think that they do. I to think <laughs> they it do. may or may not be wrong, but at we least. We might have to fight them in this cobalt cage because we are bolstering uh, allyship with a bunch of co- kobolds and we're trying to get them all under a singular clan. Just maybe. Just maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Collapse of the will. Uh, I don't know. I love her, though. Uh, so, like, her actual character? Her... So, the reason she ended up, you know, with this patron is because, like, she wants vengeance. And, you know, like... Mm-hmm. Not, she technically got it uh, before she got into jail. Because the way we started this character, they started at, like, I believe, fourth level? Okay. Oh, yeah, we started at, like, fourth level. Sorry, how my stuff boosted. 
And she already went through. You already got your two subclasses. There is no two subclasses. Just one, I promise. Well, you got your patron and whatever your uh, boon is. To talk in my party's heads, which was really helpful because we're in with the Greek pantheon, and we're in their city, and we're trying. We had to hide for a week to prove ourselves to this greater organization called Kalathos, Mm -hmm. and we had to survive for a week without getting caught. And uh, we might have had a an orc with us, so uh, stealthing was fun, hiding was fun, invisibility was fun, talking in your head was really <laughs> helpful when you don't want to get caught in the back alley <laughs> in the red light district. Yeah, the red light district. Mm-hmm. <laughs> as, as you do, as you do. Hey, I've been triggered. Boxes there. Red light district in a world that's not Ben's. <laughs> <laughs> Plagiarism. No. Yeah, because you didn't pull it from Amsterdam at all. What's an what's an Amsterdam? We don't watch anime here. Of course not. Of course. <laughs> we <just> Wait, <sighs> Ben, excuse me, what? <laughs> what? Huh? What? Yeah. What? Oh, huh? oh, oh. What? Wait, what? Wait, what? Anyways. Oh. <laughs> hmm. Uh, hmm. Yeah. Hmm. 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 Hi, welcome in. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, wrong shop. Late, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> is this Starbucks? No. no. No, this is Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> Eyes lit ablaze. Uh, do you have stuff with Python? Not here. <laughs> we did, but this we did, but this weirdo came in and bought all of them. <laughs> there was like eight of them. <laughs> if it's the same item, it's one attunement, right? You only list it once. Same item. Oh boy, jeez Louise! <laughs> It'd be absurd if you could find a bunch of like the same item. Imagine oh, though. Goodness. I would Dual wielders. Oh now. boy. That's multiple achievements. Anyways. Yeah. Oh. She's uh she might have she might or may not be in love with a Shadar Kai of the opposing family before her parents died, before she had to move. No, just maybe. Ooh, okay. So there's like a love interest, like there's a love thing interest going on but where they're, it's like But they're not supposed more, to be together. Even more Edge in there. Low key Ooh, I mean, gonna marry into another noble elven family without a shadow guy with the guy that she likes. I don't know. We haven't <laughs> hit that point yet. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> uh, anything else that we should know about Ren? Oh, yeah. She also has um a familiar. She took Pact of the Chain. Oh, and okay, it is okay. as usual whenever I take it, a sprite. Because you can get the little body. Honestly, we should add to the list of like, oh, Dale's playing in the game, so that means we have an Aladdin Warlock. We could also just throw in, at third level, she'll be packed with a chain as well. I've taken Tome on occasion. <laughs> I took Blade when I hex when I was a hex blade. Okay. Wait, you've been more than just Great Old One? <laughs> I have been more than Great Old One. Oh, so you mean when the subclass itself basically tells you, hey, you should probably take Hex Blade? Oh, you mean when I'm you a swashbuckler rogue? Or you took blade, I mean? Packs of the blade. You mean when I'm a swashbuckler rogue and I'm multi-class and the warlock? Impossible. <laughs> it's it's not possible. Started off as a class other than warlock? <laughs> I know. I mean, I love rogues. A bunch made of my a, made a pack mid-game? Blasphemy. What? Selfies gave him a warlock? What? I kind of want to run a game where I like I'm like, all right, everybody, we're going to level twenty. I want you to really plan out your characters, and then along the way, I'm like, all right, all of you have been forced into a warlock pack for one level. Dude, I would hate you. I would. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, I Ben, would be so upset. Um, ben? I'm just, I'm See, just gonna say problem. now, please don't do that for Dragon Vale. I'm trying to plan my character very carefully. Ben. Here's the problem, Ben. From here on out, I'll only play warlock, so that way I don't get messed up by it. Exactly. Now you have a second pack. Now, <laughs> now you have a second pack! You have one box, now you have two. Wait, wait a second. You are is fiend and celestial it... now. <laughs> wait, is that Mom how it works? Or does the rest of the party somehow end up getting the same pact as I do? 
No, you are now fiend and celestial. I think, you know, <laughs> I think that's way cooler. I you think now have to cool. uh, juggle the responsibilities of a fiend who wants you to consume souls and a celestial who wants you to protect them. <laughs> no, no, I think that's way cooler though. Like, like, like some some random quest or whatever ties in the rest of your party to have to make a pact with the deity that with the not deity but patron that you made a pact with. That's awesome. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> question for you guys. Yeah, yeah. Have you you guys giggled when I said it? But have you heard of coffee locks? Do you consider it viable and reasonable? I mean, I myself don't really ever multi class, so just bringing up a multi class build in the first place, I'm just like, really? But but you like just, why? You just live off caffeine. But like that that, that sweet sweet ooh so good level 20 ability though and you just kiss it goodbye just like that just goodbye bye bye never see I, you again i like to multi-class mostly just when there's like an actual like good story reason for it so like either it, it makes sense in order for your character to have a certain uh type of progression in their story or if it makes sense because, okay, you know, you've now been encountering this type of thing for the last four levels. Now you're starting to get attuned to fighting that type of thing. So maybe you take a class that is more associated with it. I can when understand I that, yeah. Yeah. If it's a, when I was in Adventurers League, however, what's the storyline? What do you use your downside <laughs> for? Absolutely nothing. So if I want more like I just did quote unquote in my downtime. It doesn't really matter. No one's following this character progression but me. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, Adventure League is great for getting new players, and I can never fault it for that. But the second I found the world of non Adventures League, oh, I so could never go back to Adventure yep. League. It's impossible. Oh, oh my gosh, you're using experience points? Are you serious? You're like, using are you using homebrew? Using homebrew? There's no homebrew? Flexible. That's that. I've read the whole thing. That stat block. I literally, as a player, man, I get no more surprises than here. <laughs> I want, I want suspense in in my own brain and my character's brain. I don't have. To I want to have no clue what's around the corner. <laughs> I've been spoiled by Ben. Like, it, I'll admit, man, it can be hard sometimes to not metagame, but you work mm -hmm. through it and you just deal with it. Yeah. <clears throat> but at that point. It's impossible not to metagame. Like, every single creature, like, man. We've been spoiled by Ben. That's the only ben, it's thing okay. I can say. You can tell me things and I won't metagame. Because I'll forget. Because <laughs> you forget what about them. <laughs> Alright, so, so, Selfie, here's a thing for, for her to know, okay? Okay. Alright, so first of all, this next session, it's going to be a lot. Oh. Man, that was really? a funny joke he did there. That's, that was, oh, that was crazy. No, no, I'm hearing them in my brain. Oh my god. Anyways, no. so wait, if wait, you wait, want wait, to guys, 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 you guys. can Ben is a great old one world patron? Cthulhu? He's talking he's the he Ben is Cthulhu. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> if you like the fact that people are warlocks and have packs with stuff and that you now have a patron, well, maybe you can join our Patreon and become a patron oh. of ours. Also, did someone uh, say Patreon? Yes, I did, Ben. <laughs> Would you like to talk more time. about it? I would love to talk more about Patreon. Let's talk about the three things that went up on Patreon this Friday, last that just passed as the recording Ooh. of this. On Friday wow. the 27th of November. Uh, yeah, so, uh, early <laughs> access uh, posts no. early Tuesday morning, which is the day before we actually post for everybody else. So you get it a I whole day before I think for them, the most recent else. Friday is the 4th. Well, I haven't planned that far ahead at this point, Wait. so... <laughs> He's talking about what released on Friday of this week, Jacob. This week okay. recording time. <laughs> so, so our Friday, not their Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, I, yeah, no, I, I'm not that far ahead yet, but... Okay, okay. Uh, just so everybody knows, there is Homebrew that I'm posting, um, and it comes out every Friday. I'm trying to post three things uh, every Friday for all of you guys to enjoy. I was also 
planning on posting. I might have by the time this comes out. Who knows? The stat blocks for a boss. I'm posting that for free. There's no uh, money donated needed to see that one. It's a big old Thanksgiving turkey that is a CR30 colossal monstrosity. So hopefully that's up by then. <laughs> and I'm guessing that it'll also probably be up on our website, travelerstipsandtails.com. Probably. But if you want to see some cool items like the Gauntlets of Counterspell, the Ember Amulet, or the Sword of Dragonkind, plus two, <laughs> go ahead and check out go ahead and check out our Patreon and all sorts of other goodies, including talking to the travelers about whatever it is you may want. Yeah. Patreon.com slash Traveler Sips and Tales. Uh, you can also go to our YouTube page at Traveler's Tips and Tales. And by the time that this episode is released, we will have either recently released or are about to release a <laughs> very first YouTube video that is not podcast. Okay. <laughs> One of which being titled Meet the Travelers, where you get to see our faces and actually put a face to the to the, the name names and the hearing. voice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and you also can... a preliminary sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you can also go to our instagram where we try to keep up with posting and that's our most active account that's going to be travelers tips and tales you can go to our facebook which i'm trying to make slightly more active but not really travelers tips and tales you can go to our twitter at tips tales you can go to our tumblr travelers tips and tales you can Email us any questions or stories that you may have at travelerstipsandtails at gmail.com. And as they mentioned before, we have a website, travelerstipsandtails.com. Yes. And also, shout out to um, our patron, Benjamin, his mother. Thanks, Ben's mom. <laughs> yes. My mother <laughs> supports us at the $50 level. <laughs> she is she is supplying the bag boys she she is the bag <laughs> she gave us ben and she also gives us money every month but just because of poggers thank you very she, much. she also has not used the option where she gets to talk to us <laughs> yeah Truth. Talk to her son. which i mean i'm not gonna lie i'm okay with because i feel like it'd be a little awkward <laughs> question boys yeah what's up do you post sneak peeks of what's going to be on your Patreon, on your Instagram, Tumblr, website, Facebook? Uh, that would be our website. So um, we have some homebrew items that are on our website. That so just so you can like kind of get a feel of like what, what kind of stuff find, we're doing. What kind and of, also what kind of stuff the answer to that is Patreon. yes Ooh. on Tumblr because they don't control what I post on Tumblr at all. <laughs> Matter of fact, they, I don't think they've ever even looked. <laughs> I've, I've looked at the Tumblr back when you posted as Brick. I'm not going to lie. Or I Boulder. haven't. <laughs> I, I can't remember if it was Brick or Boulder. I have faith in his decisions. I probably will pay for that one day. I, I just, you know what, it's Tumblr. Tumblr is crazy, man. I just trust Ben's judgment with Tumblr. And I'm just going <laughs> to leave it at that uh, later. <laughs> <laughs> Peace out. <laughs>